As a guy who likes to review popular watches on this platform, I like to be ahead of the game wherever possible. It's not always feasible, but because I'm always switched on, sometimes I get a mental tap on the shoulder when I least expect it. Such a little finger poke happened just three weeks ago when I stumbled across an older review of an escapement time watch. It was a Flieger and it had blued hands. I'm not really into those watches, nor those sizes, but there was no denying the quality on show there. Of course, I had to visit their store on AliExpress and I found you could actually build yourself a decent three watch collection from these guys. And then I saw this. And then I saw the price. £42? You guessed it. I placed my order and I waited for it to arrive. And I waited. And then I waited some more. Three weeks later and here we are. This is the Escapement Time H0300 and it has the looks of a Hamilton khaki. So how will it fare versus my collection of field watches? Let's find out. Hi there and welcome back to John's Watch Joint. Yes, the watch has finally arrived. This is the escapement time H0300. Took three weeks to get here, which is rather strange. Some other watches have actually arrived in six days from China to Scotland, which is quite bizarre. And as to the price of this watch at £42, it doesn't matter to me. If this watch looks to be a quality watch, wears like a quality watch, and it compares to my other field style watches, then it's going to be part of my collection, I think, because at this price, I really can't say no to that. But of course, we're going to have to get into it first, find out all about it. So let's have a closer look. So first things first, I'll move these out of the way. You're looking at a 316L stainless steel case. Fully bead blasted finish, 38mm in diameter, 47mm lug to lug, it's actually 47.2, lug width of 20mm, and the thickness is actually less than they say, it's 10.6mm, and as you can see, you have a rather stylish, ribbed style military strap on this, you know what it is, but I can't say the word. And the boom with this one is, as you can see, you've got a nice swooping movement there, that's the Seiko VH31 swooping quartz. Everybody loves those things, but this thing does have a downside. It has hard lex crystal, as they call it, which is just mineral. But at the end of the day, for the price, I'm not really worried about this. But the main problem with this watch is... <coughs> this. They have to do something about this. Both on the box, how they present the watch, and on the dial of the watch. On the dial of the watch, it's very muted because it is very small. It's not in your face, and it doesn't detract from the watch at all. But... This is where escapement time we're going to have to rethink their strategy when it comes to sending these watches out. I've checked out all the other stocks and you could very easily build a three watch collection from these guys. But the branding falls down when it comes to watches like this and their fleegers etc. It's going to have to change. Some sort of logo is definitely the way to go. Of course the true test of any watch is when it's on your wrist. And where the wrist size of 6.75 inches I struggle. But this one at 38mm is absolutely perfect on my wrist. Turning it over, there's no excess material on the strap. It wears very nicely, very comfortably. And the strap is a little bit cheap, but hey, it certainly does the job. And as you can see, that double pass under the case of the watch doesn't matter. It still sits really nicely. One thing I have noticed though, there is a bit of reflection in the glass. As you can see there, it's a very strange one. It kind of gives you a mirror effect. It's a double dome, but maybe that second dome is at a different angle and it gives you that effect. I've never seen that before. I actually quite like it. It doesn't detract from the watch in any way. It's just a little strange. But this watch wears really well on my six and three quarter inch wrist. All right then, back to the studio. Now, as everybody knows on this channel, I like to buy in different types of watches at different price points. And I just like to see value for money. And this is what this channel is about. Sometimes I'll look at watches at 30 and 40 pounds. Sometimes I'll look at watches at six and 700 pounds. I'm just looking at good value for money. This watch is value for money. It wears impeccably well on my size of wrist. And I think it'll suit a lot of people down to six inches and up to seven and a half inches. It's a perfect sized watch. That lug to lug is right in that Goldilocks zone. And it's very thin as well at 10.6 millimeters. And even with that double pass with a strap here, you can see it wears impeccably well. Now, the point I'm making is here, I actually had a Hamilton Khaki Field Auto. It was this one here, I'll bring up on the screen just now. And I paid £550 for that. And I hated that watch. I wore it because I bought it. It was like, 
kind of a grail watch to me, not a big grail, but I just thought I sold four or five watches to get it and I never ever bonded with it. It didn't have a good movement in it either. I got nine seconds fast per day at best and it just, it didn't gel with me. The crown was too big, but when I wore it on this strap, it wore better. This has that feeling for a tenth of the price. For something that cost me only £49 in total, this thing is punching well above its weight. But of course, we have to see what it's like against other watches. And I'm going to show you just now how it performs loom-wise in the Cupboard of Doom. Hi there and welcome back to the Cupboard of Doom. Four watches here, the escapement time is in third position there, fitting very well. There on the left, my old Pulsar, second from the left. And on the right hand side, we have this Estrian Fuel that I just reviewed last week. This is over a minute in real time. And this is really creepy. If you watch the watch on the left hand side, while I held the camera, you can see it's getting lower and lower. And this is what I don't like about this cupboard. It's creepy. Things go on in here all the time. And we always hear rumbles in the night. This is the first cupboard we ever renovated in this house. The first room we renovated in the house to get food in it. And I really don't like it. But loom wise, all of these watches very, very prominent and the escapement time really holds itself up against the others. My old Pulsar, the hands are dying because it's 20 years old and it still performs very well, but wait for this. The cupboard of doom strikes again. Now you probably thought that was staged, but the ver on the left hand side did move itself and at the end actually fell on the floor and that was me scrambling among the bags at the bottom of the cupboard to try and catch it before it hit the deck. So it was a very scary experience, but the little bit at the end with the little red eyes, that was a bit of an embellishment because it is Friday the 13th. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with this. Alright, getting back to the task in hand here. Here are the four watches that were in that loom video there. As you can see, that's the Vare on the left hand side. That's a legendary watch that fell off the shelf. And I've had this for eight months or so. It's a 36 millimeters. This is the S3. And it costs $179, but I actually bought this for well over $200 because it comes with this silicon rubber strap. It also comes with a canvas two-piece strap and it also comes with a bespoke bracelet. Uh, this is for sale on eBay just now. I am getting rid of this one because, of course, this is the Cestrian that I've just got from Cestrian Watches. Fell in love with this because it's basically the equivalent of this one here except an automatic. Love this watch. But this is my favourite. I keep wearing this. I keep gravitating towards this. I'll leave a link down below to a chap on eBay who actually sells these things. He buys them, makes sure they're in good condition first of all, and then he replaces the capacitor and their crystals if they need replaced. This is an original crystal and cyclops. That's how they come. These are mineral crystal, but he replaces them with dome sapphire, double dome sapphire, flat sapphire, and he replaces the capacitors as well. This is the YT57X022. This is between 15 and 20 years old. It's my grab and go watch. It's the most accurate watch that I have and it's a kinetic movement that's inside, it has a capacitor inside it. So the little rotor goes and you can hear it winding there and it charges up the watch. And as I said, it hits all the indices and I just love this thing to bits. It's been everywhere with me, never change it. I'm glad it's got a new capacitor in it and I will be keeping this forever. This one will be going. Whether I keep this one, I don't know because I can only keep two. That's the thing. But what I'm trying to say is, this watch in the cupboard of doom more than held its own. It was actually one of the brighter watches in there. So not only is it a great little watch for £49 delivered, it's actually got very good loom in it as well. Really punches well above its weight. When you turn this watch over as well, you can see how thin this thing is. That's the profile on the watch. And the finishing on this thing is all bead blasted. There's nothing sharp about it. Maybe not as sharp as a khaki, for example. But I'll tell you what. It really is well done, isn't it? You can see that, and you can see that double dome sapphire. And as we saw earlier on, that double dome does have an artifact with it. I think one of the double domes is slightly shallower than the other. It gives that strange artifact in the light there. It should be straight, but you get that curve on it. And it doesn't detract from it at all. I really do like this thing. And if I just pull this strap off at the back now, bear with me one second. And I'll show you the back of this watch as well. And there you go. You've got all that information on the back there. Escapement time. And it's basically giving you all the information you need there about the watch, the information you need, and the battery you need to replace it as well. Even tells you the movement. 
VH31. Excellent. That's what you need. Absolutely superb for a watchmaker if you have to take it in. Or when you're doing it yourself, you can replace the battery yourself. No problems whatsoever. And the crown operation on this thing is really cool. And this is a really important thing as well. Have a look at that crown. Let me just move in a little bit closer for you. Why don't they just put that on the watch instead of that? It certainly make a difference for a field watch like this one, don't you think? But having a look up close at this guy, even though it's a K1 mineral crystal, which is the second hardest crystal you can get, it still does a fantastic job. And look at that face. Really is well done. Really do like it. Fantastic little watch this thing for the money. Now, just a final couple of observations here. When you get a cheaper watch, you always expect some sort of caveat with it. Yes, this one does not have sapphire glass, but this K1 mineral is very good indeed. The clarity is excellent. I love the dome, and I love that artifact on it. It just makes it slightly different. I do like it. The crown operation in this thing is excellent. Screw down crown, and there you go. Pops out. You can change the time. No problem at all. And the handset on it is extremely nice and as you've seen the loom on it is superb i've got no problems with that at all the strap that's supplied with it is common fare and at this price point you're going to expect that but the hardware on it is pretty decent and that tang and buckle there is actually pretty good because it gives you a couple of options to tighten up the strap you can fold it back on itself double wind it if you want to do that if you know what i mean but it is a bit tough when you compare it to the likes of the thing i've got on here uh, on my other watches, it's a lot coarser. It'll probably last you a few months, but hey, some people like a frayed strap on their watch. It'll certainly do for that, but already I've hardly worn this at all, and I'm actually starting to see that these holes here are starting to pull apart. So it wouldn't be long before it did get a bit wrecked. So what I'll do just now is I'll put this in some straps, and you're going to be very surprised. I've done this before, and this thing looks really cool. Now the very first strap I have here is actually off my Pulsar. I got this from Wrist Envy. It's a very soft cotton military strap. Really good hardware on it and I really like it. It's very soft, very supple, very malleable and easy on the wrist. I really do like it. The next one, I tried to get a shot of this one. This is actually the rubber strap off the there with quick release on it. It's really kind of cool, works with it. Gives you an idea what an FKM rubber will look like on this watch. Apart from the fact that Molly just wants to play all the time and she's in that mood today. I do apologise, I was trying to get shots in between. She was attacking me every two seconds, biting my knees. That's the way it goes sometimes with Molly. At least she's engaging today. Now for this one, a little bit out there. This is a little brown suede strap that I had lying around. I think it's from an old marker or something like that. Not my bag, but some people want to see a brown strap to make it look like a khaki. This is the best option I have. This one, one of my favourites, it's one of my aviation leather straps, I really do like this, toughens up the watch with those ribs down the side, I think it looks pretty cool on this watch, this watch is becoming a bit of a strap monster. And for the final shots here, this is my favourite military strap, this is my favourite colour, I gravitate towards this in a lot of my watches, if I'm going to put it on this kind of strap, this is the colour I will wear. I love this colour to death, you can just find these anywhere at all, I don't know if they call them a steel grey or a steel army, I don't know what it is to call them, but absolutely superb and sets off this watch. So now we're at the point where I have to evaluate this little watch, but I'll tell you what, look at it amongst the company here. This watch here cost me £200, this watch here is roughly worth £150, when you bought it back in the day, you can pick it up now for about £70. This one here, obviously the watch from today, delivered £49 to the UK from China. This one here from Sestrian, just reviewed, only £140 in the UK. This thing punches well above its weight. Sweeping quartz movement, 56 grams, hardly any weight in it at all. Bead blasted case, decent enough little strap with it as well. 100 metres of water resistance, allegedly. Yes, it only has a K1 mineral crystal, but so does this guy. It doesn't make any difference to me. This watch has been bashed around for years and I've got no scratches on the crystal. At this kind of price point in this company with the loom, it has performed extremely well. And I tell you what, putting this next to a khaki field these days, 
I think the khaki feel will be embarrassed by its price to be quite honest with you. I've got no qualms in recommending this watch here for the price it's at. I don't think they take part in any sales but you've seen the price, you saw it on screen earlier on, £42 excluding VAT, taxes etc. Make a, you know, a nominal couple of quid off for a coupon or something like that but it's going to be under £50 or $60 or whatever it's going to be. But I'll tell you what, yeah, I've got no qualms in recommending this guy. It's in decent company here for budget fueled watches and it punches well above its weight as I said. I've got no problems in recommending it. So what do you think guys? Let me know in the comments below. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, let me know what you think and I'll catch you again in the next one. Ta-ra for now.